We're going to read a caterpillar's tail, and because of the title, I know that this is maybe fiction. Maybe fiction? Okay, let's see. A, a caterpillar had crawled up on a twig. Ooh, like the photo right here. Well, it's not a photo, it's a picture a drawing. It looked like it looked the twig over then fastened itself tightly to it by its legs and began twisting itself and moving its head up and down. Every time the caterpillar said move, it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of silk. And this is for me to see what the caterpillar was doing. An ant crawling nearby stopped and looked in wonder. What in the world are you doing? Of course, this is fantasy of, because the ant is talking. So I have an ant and it's asking, what in the world are you doing? She's confused. Okay, the ant. I'm making a house, the caterpillar said as it paused to rest for a moment. But this caterpillar is so sure about what, it, what she's doing. A bee, now I have a bee, that had lighted close by began to buzz with laughter will you tell me if you please what sort of house this is he cried he was making f making fun okay of the caterpillar so we have a confused ant and a playful bee who is making fun of the caterpillar The only sort of house I know how to make, the caterpillar answered humbly. Okay, she answered humbly, but she's still sure of what she's doing. I've never heard of anything so absurd. And if you look this word in the dictionary, it's the same in Spanish. It, I can replace it for the word silly. Okay, why don't you hunch about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that, then you will be safe. Dabi said, okay, this is the bee speaking. She thinks that she's silly. Or you might find a hole under a stone, said the ant. That's a very good place, of course, because what's what ants do. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. Is she listening to them? No, paying attention. Paying attention. She's not paying attention. She's not going to listen to their advice because she knows what she's doing. Number nine. The bee and ant went on their way. Oh, poor sort of house indeed. Each one, of, each one thought. They don't think it's going to work. But they don't know because they're not caterpillars. Number ten. Up and down the caterpillar's head moved, weaving and weaving. Now the silk was like a thin silvery veil. Through the veil, you could see faintly the caterpillar moving. Oh, it's making the cocoon. Okay. At last, the veil grew so thick that you could only guess that the caterpillar might still be at work inside. The bee came by that way again and stopped to look at the little house. Then it flew down to the ant hill. Hey, Miss Ant, come out here, it buzzed. I have such a job to tell you. The caterpillar we were watching has finished its house and has forgotten to leave any door. Oh, that's too bad, said the ant. I'm afraid it will starve. So she thinks that she... Doesn't have a door and she will go super hungry. 13. But the caterpillar did not die. It was not even hungry. It was fast asleep in its little cocoon house, knowing not whether the sun shone or the rain beat down. It was snug and dark inside. So it was a very, very nice and cozy cocoon house. 14. Many days and nights passed, and at last, what had once been, the caterpillar began to stare and awake. Awake. How strange I feel, said the thing to itself. I must have light and air. So she's ready to come out. Okay. One end of the cocoon was very soft and loose, 
and through this and was was once the caterpillar pushed its way up. How weak it felt. Fastened to it on each side were two crumpled wet things, which it began to move feebly up and down. As it moved them, it felt its strength returning and the crumpled things began to spread and dry. What are these? The wings. Broader and broader, they spread until they were strong, velvety wings, two on each side. They were a lovely, soft brown color with a pinkish border along the edges. In the middle of each of the lower wings was a glistening spot, like the eye on a peacock's feather. So all oh, paragraph 16 is telling me how the, the caterpillar that is now a butterfly is coming out of the cocoon okay 16 these things this thing was no caterpillar it was a beautiful winged moth okay i made a mistake i thought it was um a butterfly but it's a moth presently it it spread its wings and floated softly down to the earth and I have a picture here so I can visualize it and this is the ant and this is the bee. Uh, it did not fly far for it had not its full strength yet. As it happened, it alighted on the ant hill where the ant was busy hunting for food because that's what ants do. It stopped its work to stare with awe at the wonderful stranger you beautiful thing, said the ant. Where did you come from? The ant didn't recognize it. Don't you remember the caterpillar that made its house on the twig ball? Oh, yes, poor thing. It must have died long ago, said face. She thinks that she's dead. I am the caterpillar, said the mouth gently, as the ant looked at him in wonder. Just then, the bee who had laughed at the caterpillar's house buzzed by and heard the news. Well, well, it said. So that was what you were about, growing wings in your strange house. The moth steered itself and said, Now I must go and find a shelter under a rock or in some hollow tree until the sun goes down. But tonight, ah, tonight, I shall come out to find wherever I like. And it waved its great wings and flew softly out of sight. Oh, 22. The ant and the bee sat looking after it. And to think, cried the bee, that I didn't understand what the caterpillar was doing. I suppose everyone knows his own business best. And I think this could be a message. Don't judge anybody. They know what they are doing. Okay, let's do the questions. Number one, the caterpillar section while building its cocoon support the idea that it is. And the, what I remember is that the caterpillar was sure of what, what she was doing. If we go back to the story uh, here, it says, what are you doing? The only sort of house I know how to make. I've never heard of anything that absurd. It says, they give them places to go leave. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. Okay. So she's building the cocoon. Too impatient to argue with the ant and the bee. Was she impatient? Did she sound impatient? No. She didn't sound impatient. Confused by the questions. No, she was very sure what she was doing. She said, I'm building the house I know how to build. Unconcerned means not worried. Is she worried? Not concerned about the ant and the bee, what they think about her house. Is she concerned? No, she's not worried. She's like, oh, they, you can think whatever. I know what I'm doing. Right? This one sounds good. Okay. If you see, oh, let me move this. If you see right here, I'm building the only sort of house I know how to make. 
The caterpillar answered humbly, not worried, not impatient, not confused, okay? Not afraid, definitely. Was she afraid to show the animal to be the best way to make a house? No. So my only correct answer is that she was unconcerned about what the ant and to be think about its house. She kept on working on her house. Okay? And question number two. Which sentence does the author use to suggest that the caterpillar has experienced an important change? Okay, I don't need to go back to the story. This question means which one of these four, okay, show you that there is change in the caterpillar. Those are my keywords. Which one of those four tells you about change in the caterpillar? F. Up and down the caterpillar's head move, weaving and weaving. This means that she's working. Doesn't this, this mean change? No. At last, the veil, grew, the veil grew so thick that you could only guess that the caterpillar might still be at work inside. This means that she's about to sleep. Does this mean change? Use everything you know, your science class as well. No. This is not about change. But the caterpillar did not die. This is not, it's that she kept on living and she was asleep. So it's not about change. Many days and nights passed, which is time passed. And at last we had once, uh, and at last what had once been the caterpillar began to stir and awake. Is she a caterpillar? Not anymore. What had once been, but not anymore. Does this may imply change? Yes. Time through change. Or change through time. <laughs> so it was letter J. Okay, the question I know they will always ask. My best summary must have beginning, middle, end. Beginning middle and no details let's see a an ant and a bee see a caterpillar making a house that's the beginning both of them talk to the caterpillar while it works to finish its task the only way not so that could be the middle no end and details okay but can we see that letter A cannot be the customer? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm making a mistake. Paragraphs 1 through 9, not the whole story. Oh, so I need to go back and read 1 through 9 to remember the story. 1 through 9. Let me check. 1 through 9. I have it right here. So... One through nine. I got number two. Over here, over here. Number one. A caterpillar had crawled, had crawled on a twig. It looked the twig over, then fastened itself tightly by to it by its hind legs and began twisting itself and moving its head up and down. Every time the caterpillar had moved, it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of salt. So it's like the caterpillar is building her cocoon and then we have two three four an ant crawling nearby stopped and looking wonder what in the world are you doing i'm making a house the caterpillar said as it paused to rest for a moment a bee that had lighted close by began to buzz with laughter will you tell me if you please what sort of house is that he cried making fun the only sort of house i know how to make the caterpillar answered humbly i've never heard of anything so absurd so why don't you hide about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and leave in that? Then you will be safe. Or you might find a hole under a stone, said the ant. That's a very good place. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. The bee and ant went on their way. A poor sort of house indeed, each one thought. Okay, now I know that. Let me retell it to myself. 
is a caterpillar found a tree it's building her cocoon and a V and an ant are offering her ideas for better places for houses but the, the caterpillar kept on working and that's it okay an ant and a bee see a caterpillar making a house both of them talk to the caterpillar while it works to finish its task the only way it knows how that sounds good this one sounds actually good because it tells you everything let me see letter b a caterpillar is making a house out of something like silk of a twig it does have details the house is called a cocoon and it takes a long time to make it doesn't have middle it doesn't have ending okay let's do letter c a caterpillar is making a house for itself okay an ant and a bee suggest better places for the caterpillar to live okay but the caterpillar continues with its task okay and it has no details so this is good it let's it's gonna be either letter c or letter a letter b cannot be let's look at letter d let me move the page a little bit higher okay letter d an ant and a bee watch a caterpillar making a house they think the caterpillar is having trouble so they suggest different places for it to live okay it has beginning it has middle it doesn't say that the caterpillar kept on working okay so letter d cannot be it's either a or c let's let me read them again and decide which one sounds better an ant and a bee see a caterpillar making a house yes both of them talk to the caterpillar while it works to finish its task the only way it knows how okay i uh, see a caterpillar is making a house for itself this one sounds better because it fo focuses more on the caterpillar which is the main character and antony b suggests better places for the caterpillar to flee but the caterpillar continues with its task and the key words for me are here continues with its task and that you begin with the main character here for me and yes this is true this is the best choice for from between letter a and c letter c it's clearer and more complete and it's the best summary question four in paragraph six the word absurd means i uh, and if we look it in the dictionary we will know but let's look for paragraph six it says i've never heard anything so because they think that they're just crazy I'm gonna write it down I never heard anything so okay so silly sounds good so messy I've never heard anything so messy I never heard anything so difficult. No, they're saying it's not a good idea. Just don't waste your time doing that. Go find a tree. I never heard anything so gloomy. No, so silly. Okay. Number five. Which sentence from the story shows that the caterpillar is is what successful at building a good house for herself? this means which one of these four four tells you the caterpillar knows how to build her house that she built a good house she built a good house that's what the question means how which one of these four tells you that the caterpillar built a good house let's see a every time the caterpillar heads caterpillar's head moved it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of silk does this have to do with a good house no this is talking about the silk through the veil veil oh my goodness through the veil you could see faintly you could still faintly see the caterpillar moving the caterpillar is moving okay so is this about building a good house or do you understand this is a good house 
No. See, the bee came by that way again and stopped to look at the little house. But it's just talking about the bee and it says nothing about the house. D. It was fast asleep in its little cocoon house. Oh, house. Keyword. I like this. Knowing not whether the sun shone or the rain beat down. If it doesn't know if it's sunny or rainy, is it a good house? Is it a protective house? Protective. Is it a protective house? Yes. So it's a good house because it provides the caterpillar with shelter. Because she doesn't know if it's rainy or sunny. She's just cozy inside. Uh, the other includes sensory language. Sensory, your five senses, vivid, real, details, to show how. Paragraph 15, I have no idea. I need to look for my paragraph 15. Where is it? Where's my paragraph 15? Oh, here it is. Oh, and I did summarize it in my head. And I wrote down that come out, that the... the Moth came out of the cocoon. Okay, let me read it again. One of one end of the cocoon was very soft and loose, and through this end was what was once the caterpillar pushes was wild. Uh, its way out. I'm sorry. How we give out. Fastened to it on each side were two crumpled wet things, which it began to move freely up and down. As it moved them, it felt its strength returning, and the crumpled things began to spread and dry. Broader and broader they spread until they were strong, with two wings, two on each side. They were a lovely soft purple color, with a pinkish border along the edges. In the middle of each of the lower wings was a glistening spot like the eye on a peacock's feather. So, ooh, now I understand. It's describing it, the, for you the moth. It's describing the moth and the beautiful wings. So I'm going to take my notes. So it's describing the wings and how beautiful it is okay now that I have an idea these two I can check my choices okay why is he using that language to illustrate illustrates means to show to show how quickly moths can move no it's not telling you about the movement Beautiful the caterpillar has become. Yes. A strong a cocoon can be. No, it's not talking about the cocoon. And how perfectly she built the cocoon. No. It's talking about how beautiful she is now with her big wings. Okay.